that is uh, 13th unit 13 structural organization of animals you already studied about leech isn't it in leech you studied external morphology then it's habit and habitat uh, digestive system reproductive system rep respiratory system reproductive system so in that same chapter we are going to see about rabbit so first rabbit its zoological name is orcantolagus caniculus the zoological name for rabbit is orcantolagus caniculus okay next we will see about the habit and habitat so rabbit is a timid animal timid and a by the swallow so rabbit is a timid animal it lives in burrows and it shows leaping movement next it is an herbivorous herbivorous means what it eats plants and vegetables so it's a herbivorous animals and next it moves in groups moving in group so it is called as gregarious animal so this is about the habitat habitat that it's a timid animal it lives in burrow it shows leaping movement it is a herbivorous it eats plants next it is moving in groups that's why it is called as gregarious animals now next we'll see about the shape size and coloration now what is the shape it's elongated and cylindrical rabbit is elongated and cylindrical and male and female are of same size okay it its length is 45 cm and it weighs about 2.25 kg in its adult stage okay the next the body the body of rabbit is a coloration the coloration you know rabbit is white in color okay next the body of uh, rabbit is divided into head next is neck trunk and tail so the body of rabbit is divided into head neck trunk and tail so first we'll see about the head how is the same head the head is ovoid the egg is ovoid in shape isn't it so the head is ovoid now first mouth how is the mouth the mouth is having a transverse slit mouth is having a transverse slit with upper and lower jaw now in the upper jaw what is present viscous are present or vibrissae are present a small hair like structures for sensation okay then you have a snout present a snout present trunk and snout is present how is it shape it's not pointed it's blunt okay the mouth and the snout is protruding then you have nose nose with two openings okay nostrils two openings are there then eye is present and then what is present external ears are present which is called as pinnae that is movable ears are present okay the next you have neck neck is the connection between the head and the trunk and due to this neck what happens the rabbit can move its head the next is trunk now trunk is divided into anterior abdomen okay anterior thorax sorry anterior thorax and posterior abdomen the trunk is divided into anterior thorax and posterior abdomen then you have thigh region then you have tail over here now what is present in the anterior abdomen in female okay in the female what is there you have 4 to 5 nipples or teeth present and then anus is near the tail what is present anus is present now on the ventral side in the female on the ventral side in the female what is present vulva is present near the tail and in male what is present penis is present the penis is enclosed inside the scrotal sac the penis is present the penis is consisting of testes which are enclosed inside the test the scrotal sac is there the next you have limbs present pentadactyl limbs are there penta means what five you have four limbs and hand limbs four limbs are shorter than the hand limbs okay so this is about the external morphology of rabbit now next you are going to see about the body segment now body segment is what silomet animals okay silomet animals means in the previous chapter already i have told you silomet animals are what the cavity present between the intestinal canal and the body wall what is silomet silomet is a body cavity between the intestinal canal and the body wall body wall Now the body is divided into thoracic cavity and abdominal cavity and between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity what is present a dome shaped diaphragm is present in this a dome shaped diaphragm is present okay here you will be having the thoracic cavity already you have studied isn't it 
ribs are present, false ribs, true ribs, sternum is there. Then you have a dome shape, diaphragm is present. And below you have abdominal cavity. So the upper one is thoracic cavity, below one is abdominal cavity. In between there a transverse diaphragm is present, which is useful for inhalation and exhalation during breathing. Now what is present in the thoracic cavity? In the thoracic cavity you have lungs and heart present, while in the abdominal cavity you have digestive as well as urinogenital system. So this is about the body cavity. So external morphology of rabbit as well as the body cavity. Okay. So next we will see about the digestive now next we are going to see the digestive system of rabbit. Now digestive system of rabbit includes what? Elementary canal as well as associated digestive glands. The digestive system of rabbit consists of elementary canal and associated digestive glands. Now what pa parts are there in elementary canal? In elementary canal you have what? Mouth. You have buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, cecum, large intestine and anus. So as the food enters into the mouth, it passes into the buccal cavity. It has a muscular tongue present. Okay, then as the food passes into the esophagus, then it moves to the stomach, then the small intestine, next large intestine. In between the junction of the small intestine and large intestine, you have cecum present. Okay, cecum present is there, then large intestine has two portions, that is colon and recton and then anus. Now along with this elementary canal, you have associated digestive glands which pour their desecretion during the process of digestion. So now what are the associated glands present? Salivary gland, gastric gland, liver, pancreas and intestinal glands. So digestive system consists of what? Elementary canal as well as associated digestive glands. I will just show you the diagram. How digestion takes place, where is cecum present and why cecum is present in digestion of rabbit. So this is a diagram for digestion, so digestive system. See here, this is the esophagus. Here esophagus is present. Esophagus is followed by what? Stomach. Okay. So from the stomach, the food goes into the small intestine. Here you can have the associated glands, that is pancreas. Here you have liver present. Okay. So they pour their enzymes in this during the digestion process. And the food goes into the small intestine. From the small intestine, you have large intestine present, that is rectum colon. So in between this junction of this large intestine and small intestine, you have a thin walled sac like structure present. This is called as what? Cecum. Okay. And what peculiar character is there? That cecum contains bacteria. Many bacteria are present in the cecum. The cecum is a thin walled sac like structure present. Now why this bacteria present over there? The foot. What is the foot of uh, rabbit? Already told that it eats what? Plants. Isn't it? Plants and vegetables. So the cell wall of plants. The cell wall of plants contains what? The cell wall of plants contains cellulose. So what does this bacteria do? The bacteria has cellulase present. The cellulase, the bacteria produce an enzyme which is called a cellulase and they break down the walls of the cellulase and then only what happened? Digestion takes place. The bacteria secretes an enzyme which is called a cellulase. In the cell wall of the plant, cellulose is present. Okay, so this bacteria, what do they do? They secrete cellulase so that it breaks down the wall of the cellulose and then digestion takes place. After the food has been digested, it goes into the large intestine. From large intestine, it goes to the colon. Colon. And afterwards, what food has not been digested or what is not needed by the rabbit, the undigested food goes and stores in the rectum and from rectum it goes into the anus and then it's given up. Okay, so this is the digestion of system of rabbit. After digestion of rabbit, now we will see the dentition in rabbit. Dentition means what? Teeth. Okay, how is the teeth? The teeth is hard and bone like structure. Okay, used to what? Cut, tear and grind the food material. Okay, now see here. The existence of two set of teeth in the lifespan of an animal. Two set of teeth existence of two set of teeth in the lifespan is called as what? 
diphoid and dentition. Existence of two set of teeth in the life span. Diphoid. Diphoid means what? Two. Okay. So what are the two set of teeth? One is milk teeth and one is permanent teeth. Okay. So milk teeth. When you are young, you have milk teeth. The milk teeth falls down, and what teeth do you get? You get permanent teeth. So two set of teeth in the life span is called as diphoid and dentition. Now after the milk teeth is fallen down, you have permanent teeth. Okay. So in rabbit or in mammals, the teeth are of different types. Hence the dentition is called as hetero. Hetero means what? Different. Okay. You should remember the difference between heterodont and diphodont dentition. Dipho means two. So two set of teeth. And hetero means what? Different types. So that is called as heterodont dentition. Now, how, what are the kinds of teeth present? Four kinds of teeth are present in a mammal. What are they? They are incisors, canines, premolar, and molars. So these are the four kinds of teeth present: incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Okay. Now I have written number is it? It is two one. So this two represents the upper jaw, and one represents the lower jaw. So incisors. How many incisors are present? Two in the upper jaw, one in the lower jaw. Again, canines. How many? Zero. So canines are absent in rabbit. Premolar. Three in the upper jaw, two in the lower jaw. Molars. Three in the upper, three in the lower jaw. Okay. Now see incisors two by one, canines zero, premolars three by two. So there is a gap between, isn't it? So there is a gap between incisors and premolar. So the gap between the incisors and the premolar are called as diastema. Okay, the gap between the incisors and the premolar is called as diastema. Now you have dental formula. Dental formula is just a way to represent the number of teeth. So what is the dental formula for rabbit? Incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. Incisors two by one, canines zero, premolar three by two, and Molars is three by three, so the dental formula can be represented by two zero three three one zero two three. Okay, so this is an important question, two mark question. Dental formula for rabbit. What is heterodent dentition? So when heterodent dentition is asked, you should write different types of teeth. Okay, in rabbit the teeth are of different types. That is heterodent, and diphodent means two set of teeth in the lifespan of an animal. Now, for example, you can see in the book also in the book. You have the book. You can see. I so say this is the upper jaw and this is the lower jaw. Okay. So incisors. You can see. See incisors. How many are written over here? Two by one. So you are. You have two teeth and this is. You have one set of teeth. Okay. Then you have premolars. You have molars. So there is a gap between incisors and premolar. That is called as diastema. Okay. Next, we are going to see respiration. Respiration in rabbit. Now, respiration in rabbit takes place with a pair of lungs. Lungs is present, and respiration takes place with a pair of lungs. Okay. What is the color of lungs? The color of lung is lightly pink in color, and it is a spongy tissue. Lungs is a spongy tissue, and it is light pink in color. Okay. Where it is located? Already I have studied in body cavity, isn't it? That it is enclosed in the thoracic. cavity diaphragm is there and above the diaphragm you have thoracic cavity in that lung is situated now lung is lungs are enclosed by a double wall membrane that is called as pleura double wall membrane is surrounded by the lungs which is called as pleura now how does respiration takes place atmospheric air okay is atmospheric air you studied no nose is there nose has openings isn't it human beings even you also you have two openings so air enters the external nostrils from this external nostrils it is going to the nasal passage from nasal passage it moves towards the pharynx okay i'll show you the diagram what did we see respiration okay lungs how it is spongy tissue it's like a pink in color and it is 
having a double wall membrane which is called as pleura okay double wall membrane which is called as pleura now atmospheric air in comes it goes into the external nostrils from nostrils it goes to the nasal passage from the nasal passage pharynx and through pharynx it enters into the glottis now see this layer you see is it this is called as glottis from the glottis it enters into the trachea that is your windpipe it enters into the trachea that is windpipe now above this trachea or windpipe you have a extended portion the enlarged portion which is called as larynx or it is also called as voice box okay now this voice voice box is supported by four cartilaginous plates like this cartilaginous plates are present inside this voice box that is larynx the enlarged portion of the trachea is called as larynx or voice box in this four cartilaginous plates are present and inside this voice box what is present vocal cord okay vocal cord is present the vibration of this produces sound the vibration aanu perukuda enna avudhu sound produce avudhu appo sound enge produce avudhu the vocal cord the vocal cord enge irukudhu it's then the voice box in the larynx so there are four cartilaginous plates what happens vibration takes place and then a sound is produced the next what you have trachea this trachea is also made up of rings of cartilages it is made up of rings of cartilages for the free passage of the air now next to this wind pipe or this trachea what is present one more pipe is present which is called as esophagus what is also called as foot pipe it is also called as foot pipe next to this trachea only it is present now here you have a flap like structure present above the glottis you have a flap flap like structure present which is called as epiglottis now why this epiglottis is present now when you have your food or lunch or breakfast or whatever okay by mistake the food should not enter into the trachea in the trachea full of food enter out kuda the what happens this epiglottis closes the flap madri irukku and vandu enna avum close aagidu vandu madri adanalai the food enna avadhu in the trachea full enter avadhu adha madri suppose enter right the food enters the trachea what happen ungalku pore irumba illa மூக்குழியா இல்ல வாயுவுலயே அந்த ஃபுட் பார்ட்டிகுல என்ன வெப்பனா வெளிய வந்து சோ this epiglottis prevents here i have written for you the epiglottis what does it do it prevents the entry of food into the trachea okay so larynx epiglottis glottis larynx trachea now the trachea extends into the lungs as bronchies okay further this bronchies gives rise to many branches which is called as bronchioles which is called as bronchioles the next this bronchiole gives rise to a small duct which is called as alveolic duct and at the end of this bronchioles what you have you have small alveoli present these are what alveoli now this is the main part because here only what happens the exchange of gases takes place you take you breathe in oxygen you breathe in air is it so oxygen is needed carbon dioxide is not needed so all the purification of uh, air takes place in here that is the alveolus air enters through all this process from the trachea it goes to the branches from branches it goes to the bronchioles and then to the alveolus and here only what happens the air gets purified okay now two process takes place that is inspiration expiration inspiration is nothing but breathing in and expiration is nothing but breathing out okay now next system what we are going to see is the circulatory system now the circulatory system includes what the circulatory system is formed of blood blood vessels and heart so this three in combination circulatory system okay now the heart is what shape the heart is pure shape and it is lies in the thoracic cavity you have already studied isn't it lungs and heart lies in the thoracic cavity okay and what is present the heart is covered by again by a double wall membrane which is called as pericardium
okay heart is covered by a double wall membrane which is called as pericardium lungs what you study lungs is pleura and heart is pericardium okay now we will see how the circulation of blood takes place in blood so heart is made up of how many chambers four chambers heart is made up of four chambers this is one two three and four that is two auricles the upper chambers are called as auricles and the lower chambers are called as ventricles okay now in between this right auricle and the left auricle a septum is present okay the blood should not get mixed so septum is present which is called as inter auricular septum see here right and left auricles are separated by inter auricular septum so here one septum is present which is called as inter auricular septum similarly here right ventricle and left ventricle one septum is present which is called as inter ventricular septum clear inter auricular septum inter ventricular septum now what happens here also see a right auricle now this right auricle opens right auricle opens into the right ventricle now how does it opens it opens by right auricular ventricular septum so here right aurico ventricular septum is present which is guarded by a valve which is called as tricuspid valve okay similarly left auricle opens into left ventricle by inter auricular ventricular septum which is guarded by a valve which is called as bicuspid valve or mitral valve clear is four chambers and the septums which are present between the chambers okay now see here right auricle receives blood and this blue color i have shown you isn't it the blue color represents deoxygenated blood so right auricle receives deoxygenated blood from the pre cable as well as right ventricle receives from the post cable it is also called as superior vena cava or it is also called as inferior vena cava so from this two sides what blood is there deoxygenated blood is there okay so from the right auricle the blood pushes through this tricuspid valve into the right ventricle before that already from here impure blood has come into the right ventricle isn't it so from this right ventricle deoxygenated blood your one valve is present through here the deoxygenated blood flows out to the pulmonary arteries the deoxygenated blood is carried through the pulmonary arteries and for purification it goes to the lungs for purification it goes into the lungs and here the deoxygenated blood gets purified okay after the blood is purified now ox deoxygenated blood becomes what oxygenated so this oxygenated blood is then brought by the pulmonary veins the deox oxygenated blood is brought by the pulmonary veins and it is poured into this left auricle from left auricle the blood has been pushed the valve opens the blood comes to the left ventricle from left ventricle the aortic valve is present okay through this the blood goes into the aorta and from aorta the blood is supplied to all parts of the body so deoxygenated blood through this tricuspid first from this right ventricle it is given to the pulmonary arteries from pulmonary arteries it goes to the lungs for purification after purification pulmonary veins bring it to the left auricle from left auricle to the left ventricle and then it goes to the aorta and then to all parts of the body now only two exceptional cases over here what is that this pulmonary arteries all arteries carry oxygenated blood only pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood similarly pulmonary veins carry deoxygenated blood only one exceptional pulmonary vein all veins all arteries carry oxygenated blood all veins carry deoxygenated blood here only ulta is there okay so this is about the circulation of blood in rabbit okay system next we will see the nervous system of rabbit okay now nervous system comprises of what central nervous system that is cns 
peripheral nervous system pns and autonomic nervous system that is ans okay you should know this because question they will be asking what is ans so you should know to write autonomic nervous system now central nervous system that is cns consists of what brain and spinal cord central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord now peripheral nervous system peripheral nervous system is made up of what 12 pair of cranial nerves and 37 pair of spinal nerves next autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system comprises of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves okay so what is what does the work what is the work of parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves to bring about the voluntary and involuntary movements which you have already studied in ninth standard what is voluntary and involuntary movements now we will see about the brain now the brain is enclosed in a cranial cavity the brain is protected by a cranial cavity and this brain is protected by three membranes the brain is protected by three membranes okay now the outer one the outer one is called as dura mater outer one is called as dura mater okay the next one the middle one the middle one is called as arachnoid membrane okay dura mater arachnoid membrane and the inner one the inner one is called as pia mater okay so brain is protected in a cranial cavity which is covered by three membranes the outer one is dura mater the middle one okay the middle one is called as arachnoid membrane and the inner one is called as pia mater so you have to remember these three membranes now the brain is divided into fore brain mid brain and hind brain okay it is also called as prosencephalon mid brain is called as mesencephalon and hind brain is called as rumencephalon okay now we'll see the structure of brain we'll see the structure of brain of rabbit it is made up of what two pair of olfactory pair of olfactory lobes it is made up pair of olfactory lobes you have cerebral hemisphere present you have cerebral hemisphere present and you have diencephalon so pair of olfactory lobes cerebral hemisphere and diencephalon this all comprises so what brain four brain okay now this right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere okay they are fused together at a point by a band of nervous tissues which is called as corpus right here collosum okay now just i'll show you okay now suppose this is your brain okay so this is what right hemisphere and left hemisphere isn't it so this right hemisphere and left hemisphere they are joined together at one point okay that is called as what band of by the band of nervous tissue which is called as corpus callosum clear everybody so similarly the left hemisphere the right hemisphere left hemisphere connected at a junction that is with the help of band of nervous tissue which is called as corpus callosum the next you have mid brain mid brain optic lobe is present the mid brain optic lobe is present and then hind brain comprises of cerebrum pons and medulla oblongata so this are the parts of the nerve that is brain okay in next chapter in further more detail you will be studying about this as well as the circulatory system as well as brain okay okay next we are going to study about the urinogenital system now see here urinogenital system comprises of urinary or excretory system the urinogenital system comprises of urinary or excretory system and genital and reproductive system now see here half if you see the half portion what it is urino so urinary and excretory the next genital so re genital and reproductive system so this whole together comprises in urino genital system now excretory system how does excretory system takes place that of kidney now in kidney already you have studied is it kidney is made up of nephrons nephrons is the structure and functional unit of kidney so what does this nephrons do it separates the nitrogenous waste this nephrons helps in separating the nitrogenous waste from the blood and the unwanted is given in the form of urea okay 
nephrons are present, it separates the nitrogenous waste from the blood and then excretes it in the form, the excretion in the form of urea. Okay. And how is kidney? Kidney is dark red in color, it is bean shaped. Kidney is dark red in color, it is bean shaped and present in the abdominal cavity. Urinogenital system and digestive system, you have studied, isn't it? You have studied already that it is present in the abdominal cavity. So, kidney is bean shaped red in color. Okay, then from kidney arises what? Ureters. Okay, this ureter joins in the urinary bladder and from urinary bladder, urethra. So, this is the part kidney, ureter, urinary bladder, and urethra. Okay, now next we will see the reproductive system that is sexual dimorphism. Now, reproductive system in rabbit, the male reproductive organs and female reproductive organs are separate. Okay, all uh, in the previous lesson, uh, previous topic that is leech. What is leech? Leech is a hermaphrodite. Why it is a hermaphrodite? Because both the male and female sex, uh, uh, reproductive organs are present in the same organism. That's why it was called as hermaphrodite. Here, yeah? it's a sexual dimorphism because male and female are separate. Reproductive organs are present separately. Okay, now first we'll see about the male reproductive organ. Now, Male reproductive organ, what is present? A pair of testes is present. And this testes is enclosed into a sac like structure, which is called as scotal sac, which is present in the abdominal cavity. Then, next, this each testes consists of numerous fine tubules. Each testes consists of numerous fine tubules, which is called as seminiferous tubules. And this seminiferous tubules, they form a network of tubules again, leads into a network of tubules which is having a coiled like structure. They become a coiled tubules which is called as epidymis. Okay. This epidymis leads into sperm duct which is called as vasa differentia. This vasa differentia joins to form urethra. Okay. And this urethra which is present below the urinary bladder. This urethra runs back and passes into the penis. Okay. So this is about the male reproductive system. Now along with this three accessory glands are present. That is prostrate gland, Cowper's gland and perineal gland. Okay. So just uh, in the book diagram is there. I will just show you. See here. Okay. Here you have testes. Okay. Inside this testes what is there? It is covered by a sac like structure which is called a scotal sac. And here you have tube like network of tube like structures which is called as seminiferous tubules and they have a coiled structure which is called as epidymis as everything is present inside this scotal sac. Okay. And then it leads into what? Vasa differentia. It leads into Vasa differentia and next here you have ureter present. Okay. So this is the uh, excretory system and this is the genital system. So all together present in the same. That's why it is called as urinogenital system. Next you have glands present over here. See here. Cowper's gland, perineal gland and prostrate gland. These three glands pour their secretion which is involved in the reproduction. So this is about the male reproductive system in rabbit. Okay. Second, the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system consists of what? Pair of ovaries. The small ovarian structure present behind the kidney in the abdominal cavity. Okay. Now a pair of OB duct. A pair of OB duct opens into a funnel shaped opening. It opens into a funnel shaped opening which is called the anterior part which is called as a fallopine tube. This fallopine tube leads into uterus. Okay. And this uterus joins to form a tube which is called as vagina. Then you have a common tube is formed. A common tube is formed by the fusion of urinary bladder as well as virgina. Urinary bladder and virgina join together to form urinogenital canal or it is also called as vestibules canal. And then you have vulva present. This accessory glands, what are there? They are Cowper's gland and perineal gland. Okay. So this is a diagram is there. Do you see it? These are in the book you can see the diagram. Okay. If you see this keywords and if you see the diagram you can understand easily. Ovaries are present and you have see here. At the anterior part you have a funnel shaped portion present which is called as fallopine tubes. And then you have what? This side you have ureter present and then you have your urinary bladder. Urethra is present and then this gonam here you have corpus 
gland, pineal gland is present as well as corpus gland is present. So this is about the female reproductive system. Okay. Once again, if you go through so all these points, key points are given to you. It's easy for you to understand. If you go through this, you can understand it very easily. So go through all this. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Okay. The question answers will be given to you later. Thank you, children.